investigation of fast toppling ground for machine type communication. In this introductory video, we'll be answering two fundamental questions regarding this novel concept. Why do we need fast toppling grant and how does it work? Let's start by answering the question why. Cities are growing to be more complicated each day. In order to cater the demands of growing size and population, infrastructure also needs to be developed. Speaking of infrastructure, the telecommunication sector is developing faster than ever. This has given rise to technologies like Internet of Things, 5G, 6G, and more importantly, machine type communication, giving hope for the realization of very broad concepts such as smart cities. The basic concept behind smart cities is machine type communication. However, machine type communication greatly differs from regular cellular communication. Sensors and actuators are dominantly used here in contrast to mobile phones and PCs. Sensors gather information from events happening around in the environment and send them to base stations. Base stations then transmit the data to internet. So, the characteristics native to sensor Base station and internet combination has its own pros and cons when modeling systems. Existing cellular communication systems occupy a technology known as random channel access. This, however, is insufficient to address the requirements of MTC. So, let's have a peek at why random access is not up to this specific task. As you probably already know, random access architecture comprises of a base station covering a particular geographical area. Before any device can transmit, the device needs to have its own channel reserved in the base station. For this, a scheduling request has to be sent. Out of the available resource blocks, one channel will be allocated to this device. Not only this device, there'd be other devices requesting channels as well. To cater them all, random access technology allocates those channels in a random fashion, hence the name. But due to that, there is a high chance for two devices to request the same channel. This results in collisions and congestions in the control network. Well, that's just the beginning of problems in random access. Ultimately, these collisions and congestions lead to higher latencies and higher signaling overhead. So, it's clear that RA is not the best solution for machine type communication. Also, it's worth pointing out that when the number of devices increase, yeah, you guessed it right, the problems only get worsened. Dear weavers, that is when fast uplink run comes to rescue. Fast uplink grant is not completely segregated from random access. Although there are certain places where RA has a role to play, this futuristic novel technology solves many problems with RA and enables the realization of machine type communication. As you can see, the setup is similar to random access with the base station. But in this environment, instead of mobile phones and PCs, Electronic equipment like air conditioners and microwave ovens paired with sensors and actuators would be the expected devices to connect to the network. So naturally, the number of devices could be extremely high. Random access would have definitely led to a lot of congestions here. But fortunately with fast toppling grant, the same resource blocks can be allocated more efficiently. The trick is that the base station does all the allocations without waiting for scheduling requests by any device. In order to do that, base station first predicts the time step at which the device is going to transmit. Then it allocates the block and sends the fast toppling grant to the device. So with fast toppling grant, base station can optimally allocate resource blocks to devices waiting to transmit. 
Not only it reduces the delays, it gets rid of the hassle with signal overheads as well. Building fast uplink ground. Is it as easy as it sounds? Or is it too good to be true? Actually, no. It's because we use the cutting edge technology of the 21st century, the artificial neural networks. So let's have a quick peek at how we can create this system. Let's consider an IoT network with several MTDs and a single base station. The base station will have to decide the MTDs that are going to transmit in future. To achieve fast uplink grant, the base station will have to collect the past transmission data of MTDs over a period of time. Here 1 will represent a transmission while 0 will represent the idle state. Transmission history then can be modeled into binary sequences. The binary sequences are used as input to the LSTM. The LSTM is then trained, optimized and tested. Now the LSTM can give the base station the ability to predict future transmissions. Now the base station knows the devices that will transmit data in the future, but it has a new problem. How to allocate the uplink resources to MTDs? For this, it will use multi-arm bandits theory, a well-known reinforcement learning technique. MTDs in an IoT network have some quality of service requirements to be satisfied. They are channel state, maximum delay, and information value. Based on those QoS parameters, the rewards for each MTD will be calculated. Again, the base station has another problem, that is to find out the MTDs with the highest reward. To accomplish that, it uses the predictions from the LSTM model plus upper confidence bound algorithm for solving this multi-arm bandits problem. With this knowledge, the base station now can allocate the uplink resources to the MTDs which will have data to transmit. We hope you all liked the video. Thank you for watching.